no. mute myself too. Mute, mute. Welcome to the Gospel Reflections for this coming Pentecost Sunday. Our Gospel is from John chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. And our focus is the phrase, the Spirit of Truth will guide you to all truth. I am Chuck Novi, your host for this week. Let us begin our session tonight while blessing oneself. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. We would like to ask all participants to please mute their mics to reduce distracting sounds during the presentation and recording. We share these reflections each Wednesday night in anticipation of Sunday's Gospel readings. If you have questions, you can post them in the chat area or send them to us by email at ddredudley at gmail.com. The first two parts of this meeting are being recorded, and we make the recordings available on the parish website for those who might not be able to participate live. Look for the Gospel Reflections logo on our website and parish bulletin to find more resources. Our sessions are divided into three separate in part one, part one, our team member, Pamela Croach, will share a simple five-step Lexio Divina, or praying with the word, to encourage us all to try this form of praying with the Sunday Gospel in preparation for Sunday Mass. In part two, there will be a brief Gospel reflection by Frank Europoli, highlighting our theme for this week for those who wish to stay. Finally, in part three, Following that reflection, we will stop our recording, providing us an opportunity for those who wish to stay to briefly share the word, by sharing one word or brief point that they found helpful and encouraging. Please stay only for those parts that you wish to. Feel free to sign off at any time. Let us pray. That God may open our minds that we might hear God's word, our lips that we might proclaim it, in our hearts that we might live in. Our lecture tonight reading is me, from the Holy Gospel Chuck according Nogi. to St. John. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to his disciples, when the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth that proceeds from the Father, he will testify to me. And you also testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. But when he comes, the spirit of truth, he will guide you to all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak what he hears and will declare to you the things that are coming. He will glorify me because he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. 
Everything that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I told you that he will take from what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Now we turn to Pamela Crouch. There are many themes or phrases on which we could focus. And this week we have chosen the words, the spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. This is our reading for Pentecost, the feast day of Holy Spirit Parish. The Holy Spirit has been an important part of my life since I was a child. I um, used to go to church camp for a week each summer, and one year at the, on the last day, we were all around a campfire, singing and praying and remembering events of the week. And I remember looking into the fire and hearing God speak to me, telling me that he loved me and that he wanted me to love him back. And so that night, I asked, Jesus to live in my heart. This was the power of the Holy Spirit. As I grew up, I worked at learning more about God by studying my Bible. I learned through the help of the Holy Spirit's truth. I learned that Jesus wasn't only my Savior, but he was my friend, and that the Holy Spirit lived in me. Amen. When, I, when I was a young adult, I bought a new Bible, and I splurged and ordered a beautiful leather cover for this Bible. And on the front of the cover was embroidered a dove to remind me that I need to call upon the Holy Spirit before I did my Bible um, lessons. And so focusing on the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth that he reveals to us has been important to me for my life. I like seeing reminders of the Holy Spirit in the shape of a dove. I have dove jewelry, put it on. Um, I have dove decorations. And in fact, my car sports a very fine dove as the front license plate. But you know, you don't need to look at a dove to know that the Holy Spirit is there. You can feel him in the breeze, in the winds of Kansas, Tom. <laughs> you can see the Holy Spirit in waters, the waters of baptism. And you see the Holy Spirit in the lives of the faithful. And just like at Pentecost, when for the disciples, the Holy Spirit rested on each one of them as flames of fire. So I see the Holy Spirit in every campfire. Will you pray with me? We pray, come Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit. come upon us, each of us here, and each parishioner of Holy Spirit Parish. Bless us with your gifts of charity, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, generosity, gentleness, faithfulness, modesty, self-control, and chastity. Open your truth to me and to all those here today so that we can do as you have commanded and proclaim your truth to others. We ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now we will spend some quiet time in God's presence.
I'm going to share what action my contemplation led me to consider. Please remember that each of us will find that our actions will be very particular to what God is calling each of us to do. We learn from today's reading that the Holy Spirit reveals God's truth and that we are called to testify to this truth to others. I personally feel called to testify to those who have left our parish. Out of this calling, there is a new ministry here at Holy Spirit Parish called the Return Ministry. We're going to be connecting with people, parishioners, who have left the church. Would you like to know how to talk to someone who's left the Catholic faith? Do you have someone close to you, a son, daughter, family member, friend, neighbor? We're going to provide two classes to help you learn how to speak to those who have left the Catholic faith. And they're going to start beginning next uh, Thursday for the next two Thursdays. And we'll be training um, those people who come on how to talk about their faith to these people who have left our, our church. You can find more information about this in the bulletin. But for me, and for me, I should say, I am going to re reach out to our parishioners who have left the faith. And I'm going to do this through the return ministry. Thank you and God bless. We thank Pamela Croach for modeling for us the five steps of Lexio Divina this week. We hope this encourages us to use the reflection sheet provided on page six of the parish bulletin or on the parish website to try to do our own Lexio Divina each week to help prepare for Sunday Mass. We invite those who wish to stay as we now transition to part two, the Gospel Study Reflection. Only those who wish to stay will transition to part two, a Gospel Reflection, reviewing the same theme by Frank Eropoli. Frank will focus this Gospel Reflection on the phrase, the Spirit of Truth will guide you to all truth. Now, Frank. Frank, he needs to unmute. How's that? Better? Yeah. There you go. All right, I apologize. <laughs> But, okay, we find again ourselves in uh, in these long, long uh, discourse, the final discourse of Jesus and John's gospel, the longest uh, continuous uh, story in any of the four gospels. And it's uh, it really becomes as an antiquity, all of the great uh, sages of, uh, uh, of a long time ago, they uh, all seem to have done a farewell discourse. Uh, Moses did one in his... Uh, uh, his lifetime. And this is to be patterned after that. But what we have is a summary then of what Jesus, uh, his, from his own theology, so to speak, his own reflection of his relationship with the Father, and now tonight with the Spirit. Okay, and, and we find that in, at the end of chapter 15, we have the introduction of Jesus telling us about this, this advocate, the parakletos, the defending attorney, the spirit who will come and will uh, take care and defend Jesus' followers. I kind of find it interesting, if you don't mind, I just want to go backwards one verse, uh, because I think it's very important. Uh, because in John's gospel, you have almost like there's a trial basis going on in the background of Jesus' introduction of the, of the Holy Spirit. Because it says in, in verse 25, it says, but in order that the word written in their law might be filled, they hated me without cause. And earlier it says that Jesus warns his followers that they will hate uh, them too, okay? And, and the reason for that, and the reason why I want to tie this all together, is because in John's gospel, we have to always keep in mind the incarnation that was introduced in chapter one. And the story of the incarnation 
is the fact that Jesus comes down from, from heaven, from the, his resonance with the Father. He comes down to earth in the incarnation. The word is made flesh. But his role is to do what? Is to come and then draw us with him back to the Father. Okay? And so the drawing of us back up to the Father in, in effect says that we no longer really belong to this world we belong to the spirit world. We belong to another world. Our bodies may be here. We may reside here temporarily now. But in truth, we belong with Jesus back in the divine trinity. Okay? But in that divine trinity, he now introduces the third part. Okay? Which is going to be the, uh, the paraclete. So in chapter 16, what we're going to find, we have multiple verses that describe and start out by describing who the, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit is. Then we will transfer over to verses dealing with Jesus. Then we'll do at the end of chapter 16 verses that deal with the, with the Father. Okay. And so this is really some of the major language that we get that involves the Trinity. And it's out of this that we get the controversy that arose between the Eastern and the Western churches about uh, who really did send the Spirit. Was it Jesus and the Father, or was it just the Father alone? Okay, uh, the one thing that I would like to address is that constantly in, in John's Gospel, we are told over and over again that Jesus and the Father are one. And what Jesus has, he got it from the Father. All that the Father has, he gave to the Son. All that Jesus has, he got from the Father. Everything that he teaches, he heard from the Father. So this, this is a magnificent uh, uh, gospel that served the early church in, uh, in determining the, the theology of the Trinity. And tonight we have such, uh, such great writing on it. Okay, but if you don't mind, just a couple quick uh, comments. Uh, when we get into verse 12, and the important part now is going to say, I have much more to tell you, but you cannot bear it now. So what would that mean? I have much more to tell you. Does that mean there's going to be new revelation? Okay. Is there going to be new things that, that weren't said, okay, by Jesus, but, uh, but new things will come out because of the paraclete? And, and John tells us, no, it's not going to be that way, okay? Because we have to read real close now through the rest of the passage. And, and, and essentially what our passage is telling us is that the paraclete will be able, okay, to speak not only to Jesus's generation, but to all generations. And him speaking, it will be consistent with what Jesus himself doing his ministry had to say. There won't, in John's gospel, there really is no indication that there's going to be ultimately new revelation. It is simply going to be once Jesus ascends part of that incarnation and goes back to, to the Father, what Jesus had to say and what Jesus did is going to be more clearly in a deeper significance going to be explained by the Holy Spirit. And not only will it be deeper, okay, but it will also speak to new generations of believers, okay? So that each new generation, each new culture can understand appropriately and, and, and correctly what it is Jesus wanted from his disciple, okay? And, and so this is what we're being told, that this, the, the, how can we be assured that we're going to have the correct interpretation of what Jesus of Nazareth was teaching? Okay, and that's going to be through the paraclete. And the Holy Spirit is that who's going to guide us, okay, individually and collectively, okay, is the Spirit is there to guide us. Uh, and uh, I believe that this is one of the most significant passages in John's gospel and what we went over tonight. Okay, thank you. You have time for quick questions for Frank. Try to focus on questions that will help all of us better appreciate the meaning of the gospel. You can also submit your questions, comments, or suggestions for improving our sharing by emailing them to us at ddredugly at gmail.com. If these sessions are getting any better, it is because of all the helpful suggestions we receive. Thank all who have sent them so far. 
Chuck, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hi, I've been I've been muted for three weeks and couldn't talk to you. And I'm so sorry about last week when you all asked me to pray. I, I, I felt terrible about it. But anyways, uh, I, I appreciate everything that Frank has just said, but I just, I have, you know, he says it, it he's talking that the Holy Spirit is going to be talking to new generations. And so each new generation that comes is going to be um, not well-breaded in, in the knowledge and the truth. And I, I think that part of that, when Jesus was saying, I, I can't tell you anymore, because you couldn't digest it if I did tell you more. And that's sort of how my little take is on it. I, I that, that may not be how anyone else feels about it, but I just feel that Jesus was telling his disciples, I can't tell you anymore because you just couldn't digest it. And uh, the spirit will come and he'll guide you in all the truths that he has for you. And he'll give it to you at the level that you can receive it so that you can be obedient and be good disciples and image the love that I have for you to those around you. Yeah, yeah Ruthie, that's very good, Ruth. That's very, very good because in a way we're saying the same thing, Ruth. Yes. And, you know, and we're saying the same thing. See, and isn't it true that the first generation, the, 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 the first generation of apostles and disciples, they had a very difficult time understanding what Jesus of Nazareth yeah. was, right? Yes. Okay. And now think about this. And the, what Jesus caused was a revolution in language, right? <laughs> what I mean, okay, what I mean, these are all Jews. Yes. Okay? They had to redefine God. Sure. Okay? They had to redefine God. Okay, because now all of a sudden, okay, the Shema prayer says specifically, how many gods are there? There's one God. Okay? Right. And, there's, and this is the God that they have worshipped all, all their lives, their ancestors have worshipped since the times of Abraham. Okay, but all of a sudden now, Jesus forces upon mankind, okay, a, a different understanding, a different, more than a nuance, okay, of who God is, okay? And so when, when we have to, and that's how come I try to stress a little bit on the Trinity, all of a sudden now we have to define God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Right. Whereas, whereas to the Jewish mind, that's an anathema, okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and then, so it took time for them to comprehend. And it took the early church 300 years or longer, right? To be able to put it into a creed. So what you're saying, Ruth, is true. It, it, it took very, it took a long time for mankind to fully understand uh, the Jesus event, what Jesus meant coming into history. Amen. Mm-hmm. Thanks. Thanks, Frank. Thank you, Ruth. And, 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 and you have my sympathy uh, oh. and my prayers and my prayers. Thank you. My mother-in-law was a very faithful woman. She, she followed the way of the Lord all her life. So I feel very confident uh, she's dining in the kingdom of God. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> You'll meet her in heaven one day, Frank. Amen. I hope. <laughs> I do, too. That's what we're striving for. That's why we have these wonderful reflexes. Yes. Good question. I too was kind of pondering that phrase as well. Uh, any other questions or comments for Frank? See, it's interesting. In, 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 Jesus came and said specifically that he would reveal the Father to men. Okay, now... It's the paraclete for all, of all future generations who is to uh, introduce Jesus to all men. So it's the paraclete who guides the church. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty much what we're getting in this passage also. Jesus introduces the Father to men. The paraclete introduces Jesus to the rest of mankind from that point forward. Because Jesus understood fully. His, his mission had to return to the Father. He had to return to Father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, our goal is to grow in understanding God's word and his promises. Build hope, faith, and trust in our Lord. And share how we try to apply God's word to our lives.
Please pray for this effort to better understand and encounter Christ through the scriptures. Please also help us to spread the word about this. Special thanks tonight to Brenda Coastal, our parish music director, for sharing our music tonight. Rejoice from Heiferdahl by Roland Pritchard, 1811 to 1887, arranged by Chris De Silva, copyright 2018, all rights reserved. We have permission to share this piece under the onelicense.net license number 722664. We will shortly stop the recording. As part three is our time to share the word. This is not a time to teach or study God's word, but rather inspire and encourage one another. Our focus tonight, John chapter 15, 16 through 27, and John 16, 12 through 15. Spirit of truth will guide you to all truth. Again, this part three is for those who wish to stay and share faith, hope, and encouragement. Thank you, and God bless those of you who may need to leave right now while we briefly share the music before stopping our recording. Jesus, angels, you slid up on me. Thank you.